Then I saw in my dream that though faithful had been cruelly burned at the stake, at the moment of death, he was carried aloft through the clouds directly to the celestial city gate. Christian was taken back to prison where he remained for a time. But God, who overrules all, so wrought that Christian escaped and went on his way. He was not alone, for he was joined by a man named Hopeful, who had been moved by the noble example of the pilgrims. The two men entered into a brotherly covenant to walk the heavenly way together. Hopeful told Christian there were many other men of Vanity Fair who would someday follow them. Shortly after they left the fair, the two pilgrims overtook a man on the road and asked him where he came from and how far he was going. I come from the town of Fair Speech and I am going to Celestial City, he answered. But he told them not his name. However, he claimed that he was related to all the rich and noble families in Fair Speech. We differ in religion from some in two small matters, he said. We never strive against wind and tide and we are most zealous when religion walks in silver slippers. Guessing who the man was, Christian asked, Are you not uh, Mr. Lovegain? That is not my real name. It is a nickname given to me by some who do not like me. If you take me along, you will find me a good companion. If you go with us, you must go against wind and tide and you must also own religion in drags as well as in silver slippers. But Lovegain refused to accept these terms and the two pilgrims parted company with him. As they left him, they saw that he was joined by three others, Mr. Hold the World, Mr. Money Love and Mr. Save All. They all bowed and greeted one another with flattering words. The four had been fellow students in the school of Mr. Gripeman, who had taught them to attain success by violence, by flattery, by lying or by putting on a guise of religion. Lovegain talked to his companions about Christian and Hopeful, saying they don't understand how to profit by changing with the times. They don't wait for wind and tide but rush on their journey in all kinds of weather. They hazard all for God. As for myself, I am for taking precautions to secure my life and property. I shall profess religion only as long as the times and my personal safety warrant it. Catching up with the pilgrims, the men asked them the question. Suppose a man should be offered a chance to get the blessings of this life, but in order to secure them, he must appear to become very religious. May he not use this means to attain his end? and yet be an honest man? Christian answered, Even Even a babe babe in religion religion could could answer answer 10,000 such questions. questions. If it is unlawful to follow Christ 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 for loaves, how much more more abomination abomination it is is to make religion religion a stalking horse horse to gain and enjoy the world? The The four stood staring uncomfortably at each other. Being unhappy to reply to Christian, they fell behind and let the pilgrims go ahead. Then said Christian to his fellow, If these men cannot stand before the sentence of men, what will they do before the sentence of God? Now Christian and Hopeful quickly outdistanced the four and came to a hill called Luca containing a silver mine. A little to the side of the road stood a man named Demas who called to them, Ho, turn aside and I will show you something. The pilgrims would not be tempted to turn aside and they went on their way. But Lovegain and his companions at the first call went over to Damis and were never seen again in the way. I saw that the pilgrims came to a place where stood an old monument of strange form. It seemed to them like a pillar in the shape of a woman. On the pillar was an inscription in an ancient script which Christian was able to decipher. It read, Remember Remember Lot's Lot's wife. wife. They both concluded that this was the pillar of salt into which Lot's wife was turned because she looked back with a covetous heart as she was fleeing from ancient Sodom. I saw that they went on their way to a pleasant river. As their road lay along the riverbank, Christian and his companion walked with great delight They drank of the sparkling water, sampled the many kinds of fruits and slept safely in a green meadow full of fragrant lilies. They were sorry when they had to leave the pleasant river and go back to the rough 
stony highway. Their souls were discouraged because their feet were sore from the long journey. They longed for an easier way. A little before them, on the left hand, was a lush green meadow called Bypath Meadow. Seeing a grassy path running through the meadow parallel to the road, they could not resist the temptation to follow it. This path was easy to their feet and they walked blissfully along till they met a man named Wayne Confidence. He told them the path led to the celestial city, so they followed him. But alas, night came on and the sky grew dark. Wayne Confidence, walking ahead, missed the path, fell into a deep pit and was dashed to pieces. pieces.